Welcome, Spartans, to the latest podcast of all Halo Book Club. I'm your host, Oren, and with me today is Aaron. Hello. And David. Hello, everybody. We got the bros in town, and we're going to talk about the live action miniseries of Halo 4 Forward Unto Dawn. It was a, a five part miniseries that was it came out as like promotional material leading up to the release of Halo 4 back in 2012. And we're going to talk about it. Do you guys uh, just have any initial reactions to, to the show? This is like the first real live action, at least like lore based material that we've had for the franchise, right? Yeah, well, this was the first live action thing outside of like the adverts. Yeah, like like just like general marketing material. Like this, this kind of promoted Halo 4, but it did it more so as like a story. It's first a story, but they kind of just marketed it and released it as a way to get you hyped for kind of Halo 4. It did a good job. My first thing actually that I think of is shock that uh, 2012 was five years ago. Don't like that. Damn, that's true. <laughs> But just just shy of five years, yeah. Once once November rolls or, or October actually, because that's when it came out. Doesn't seem like that long ago. We were sitting around waiting for these parts to come out every week. It's probably out of the two live action things they've done, it's the best. Although that bar set kind of low by nightfall. But but this this does have its own like it's it's actually surprising. I think this is the first time I've watched it since it came out, and watching it now. I'm sh- I'm still sh- I'm even more shocked that Nightfall was such a bigger disappointment kind of based off of the story they were able to tell and even the production value and like they did a lot of good things like I wouldn't say they were like overly amazing but um but I think in a nutshell like this series like worked for lack of a <laughs> more elaborate yeah, my initial we'll get response, into it. I loved it I thought it was really good I was really excited for it. I thought it got better and better each episode got better and better I think it's the best live action thing we've had to date. I, I agree. My, the, I mean, the the live action adverts though are like really, really powerful. Some of them are anyway. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's go ahead and get into it. So this, uh, we don't really have an author uh, in a way, but I guess uh, like we usually have with our actual book clubs because Halo, you know, has such a vast medium for all their different kind of stories that they want to tell. Uh, we have a director, which is uh, Stuart Hindler. And then it was written by two brothers, uh, Todd and Aaron uh, Helbing, published by 343 and Microsoft, of course. And it originally aired through the Halo. Was the Halo channel a thing? It was, yeah. No, I, I think was it? I think I saw this on YouTube, though. I want to say this was the first big thing for the Halo channel. Was it? Didn't the Halo channel come out just before Halo 4? It may have been on Waypoint. I think it did. I'm trying to think, like, what I was... like Because this wasn't released, like, with Reach, was it? Like, this was, like... like I'm trying to remember, because I... For like uh, Spartan Ops, when that was released, you like logged into Halo Four, and then you got into Spartan Ops, and then you watched the video. I think through Waypoint, and so I'm trying to think like how this was. Released. Remember, we used to have the Waypoint app on the 360. Wasn't this that? And then the Halo Channel came out later, and we got that on the Xbox One for Nightfall. Oh, that's right. The Halo, the Halo. This is all before Xbox One. So yeah, I think it was the Waypoint because app. the Waypoint app uses the bridge set of the infinity for the background now that i think about it it's got like the command deck so i think that's what this was i think well so i remember because i watched it in work when they launched so it couldn't have been on a console or at least exclusive to a console because i remember watching it in work i remember it being on youtube as well yeah so you watching it on YouTube. youtube i don't think is out of the question so to speak but I think they were really pushing to to watch it on Waypoint so you can get like the fancy kind of not in game, but like you can get like the little pop ups and the uh, tracking and all that kind of stuff. Or I think you got like Avatar. But anyway, so this this was released online anyway, starting on October 5th. And then it was released every Friday up until the Friday before, which was Halo or sorry, which was November 2nd and then Halo four came out the following tuesday on november 5th each part's about 20 minutes or so so it's about an hour and a half of um total uh footage there yeah i think the total runtime on netflix for me was an hour 20 minutes for the whole thing okay yeah well you knew you watched it in one yeah the the netflix cut has it all chopped back into the one thing the youtube cut that i'm looking at is one hour 31 minutes on waypoint i just added all the or sorry, on the Halo channel, I just added all the parts up. But I also had, like, the 30 to 40 second snippets of, like, the credits and the teaser for the next episode in mind. But anyway, it's about it's about an hour and a half. And it's a pretty quick 
pretty quick watch. It escalates pretty quickly once the story kind of gets going. But to get into the story, the it takes place at the uh, Corbolo Academy on S- Sir Sinus 4. Is that how you say that? Or is, is it with like a hard C? Sir Sinus? going with you nailed it. Sir Sinus 4, not Kirkinus? Kirk- Kirk- yeah, and so I guess I'll just go through the different snippets we have, and if there's anything that you guys wanted to kind of mention about each part we can kind of go into it in more detail the show opens and it actually opens in the quote-unquote present timeline uh where you have lasky as uh, as an adult officer and he finds cortana's like distress beacon from the forward unto dawn saying that you know we, we've had casualties but we have survivors and we're abandoned on the ship and uh, he's like listening to it over and over and over again. And then it kind of flashes to him as a as a kid waking up in a cryopod. And all of his other kind of officer training cadets are in, in the cryotube chambers. And they're all waking up. They're all disjointed. There's like an emergency. There's this crisis going on. And they throw on their uniforms. And, uh, and they rush outside into like the wilderness. And they're trying to... I don't know, combat these these enemies. And so they're, they're going around and they, they meet up and link up with their different squad mates. And then there's discussion on what they should do. And there's some disagreement. And Lasky's talking about, you know, why should we fight these insurrectionists? Why can't we just kind of loop them around, pin them, and then try to sort it out and talk to them? Why do we have to just go all gung-ho and fight once they get close to us? I'm blanking on that. Per- was it Was that vickers the one who's in charge do you guys remember or is that someone else i think it might be vickers in that scene i the, think like, i think it was guy. yeah i think it was vickers because he's kind of the bully throughout the show and so there, there's some disagreement in lasky for i don't know kind of childish reasons i think just kind of goes against the orders that he's supposed to follow and runs out and then gets shot by what we think is an insurrectionist then kind of like a Hunger Games announcer kind of comes over and says, you know, game pause them whatnot. And then you find out this is a whole training simulation and their, I guess, commanding officer and they're not their commanding officer, but they're the person that's running kind of their their small uh, unit. Oransky, she's the squad leader. The squad, that's it, squad leader. So Oransky comes in and she was like, you, you know, disobeyed orders, you ran out very foolishly, you got yourself dead, and who knows what would have happened to the rest of your your squad, but, you know, that's that was a very, like, that was a, because last week's tried to make it seem like, oh, it's an, it was a necessary risk for, you know, sacrifices to happen on the battlefield, and she was basically saying, well, like, well, no, n- not really in that context that what you're arguing, like, you just kind of carelessly did what you did. So he kind of just got very... She pumps two more, like, trank rounds oh, in yeah, there and that leaves too. him on she the like ground. It's just like... Double taps him. It's a real fuck you moment. By the way, do you think they missed a beat there by not getting the Halo multiplayer announcer to announce their, huh. uh, their match? No, I don't think that would have... I, I, I feel like that would have taken you out of the moment. I think maybe. Yeah, because I feel like that's more of like an Easter egg. Like when I listen, when I play like the Infinity and whatnot, or play multiplayer in five, even though it's on the Infinity, like there's a certain level of like, okay, I'm actually just playing a multiplayer game. I'm not really training to be a Spartan, so to speak. And so I feel like if they if they had that iconic double kill guy on there, it it would have. It would have kind of broke the immersion a little bit and just been like, oh, yeah, this is a Halo movie or a Halo show. But they, they incorporate other things in there kind of nicely that I think do work that don't really take you out of it. Like there's a, there's an ODSD poster that they had in a background, but it's actually like a marketing material for the game Halo 3 ODST. And like it kind of just that's cool. I never noticed that in the in the world. Yeah, and I noticed that watching it this time. I was like, oh, cool. So anyway, so that kind of happens and things calm down and Lasky goes back to uh, like, you know, his barracks and stuff and hangs out. We get some moments between him and the rest of his crew and his squad. We kind of meet the other important characters. We have General Black, who's, I guess, in charge of the Academy to some degree. Yeah, that's the impression I got. I don't know about the whole Academy because you also have some other kind of adult officers. But these are also kids who are like 15 and 16 years old. Like, I don't I don't know if you guys... The Academy is all like, they're all like higher ups, aren't right? they? All like the people are like connected. So these are all kids of high-ranking military officials going through kind of command school. That is it's true. That kind of vibe about it. My assumption was they were all like eighteen-year-olds. Can you enlist in sixteen for an officer? I thought they were younger because they're in school. Do you know what I mean? I, I didn't get not, the vibe at all. It's that not they were school. 18. I thought this was like fast-track officer training, not 
school. It could still be that age for this group I, of yeah, pr- I think it is kind of fast track officer training. They're definitely younger. They're not like, eighteen. There's no way though. They're... No, no, they're they're like fifteen at most, maybe sixteen. Because it was also surprising. Like, well, we'll get to the end um, at the end. But um, but anyway, so you're meeting these characters. You have you have Lasky, and then their squad leader Zorinsky. Michael Sullivan is a uh, another another character that he's friends with and then Vickers as we mentioned is his kind of like bully kind of a guy the kind of character that relates the most with Lasky is is Silva and she's she kind of just connects with him and you know is like why'd you do that you know why'd you disobey orders it's kind of it's foolish that's you know I don't know I can't remember what she was saying but she was basically saying that in order to lead people you need people to like you and trust you and they're not going to do that if you just disobey and and you know go against orders and be all reckless. that kind of stuff yeah and be reckless so um so this this first episode is mainly just kind of meeting the different characters and grounding yourself in the academy and getting a feel for everything we also get introduced to lasky's brother who's an odst who is an odst and so he kind of tapes these video logs that are like sent like a, like almost like a letters letters home yeah yeah they're, they're like they're the video video messages that's that's what i was looking for so yeah and and so he's saying you know what he's been doing he gets like a tattoo and shows them and he's like oh mom's gonna freak but you know who cares which i don't really know why she would freak i mean it's a freaking tattoo and it's the marine <laughs> it's the marines but i got the feeling he was uh he was a graduate of that academy but he was a like he's an odst he doesn't seem to be in command so i assume the mother would be pissed off because he's just an odst and he's got a tattoo he's oh, yeah. not he doesn't seem to be in charge of the odsts their mother comes across as a real hard ass like military career woman so that that was what i sort of inferred from it was that he's just an odst the very fact that he was an odst he was yeah rebelling. he's he's kind of yeah. rebelling in it and then he's got this tattoo in his back as well that's a good point he definitely doesn't seem to be in charge because they're he's very young in it as well yeah he you see brief interactions young. with him and the other guys off camera and they're kind of like giving him shit for yeah he might be he might be 18 thereabouts i think he says at one point during a drop he swallows some like swamp water and ends up like vomiting and almost shitting himself in his armor so they nickname him the volcano so like i, well, I get the f- right, Jay, yeah. i get the feeling he's uh maybe in at the deep end with the grunts he's just a new guy he's the rookie that's a good way to put it and then we also learn that his or that you know their mother is um like one of the like overseers of this academy as well is she isn't that her no no that's that's a different woman that is colonel uh Meffy? the woman who we talked to in like an interview form that's not his mother or anyone's mother in the academy. Colonel Mahaffey, I think Mahaffey. it's pronounced. Yeah, no, it's not his mother. Because she talks about your mother would be disappointed in you or something like that. Because he's talking about dropping out or washing out. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't know why I had that impression. Well, it's kind of easy enough to do. Because I think the first time I watched it, I had to do a double take. Because they're both like hard-ass brunette military women that sort of look vaguely similar and terrifying. The tension between them seemed to be very... Like, it seemed more personal. She seems to have, like, a vested sort of mentor thing going on with him, whereas, like... She seems to be care a little bit. She's a bit more compassionate than you'd expect. General Black definitely doesn't seem too moved one way or the other by anyone, but she seems to have a bit of an interest. She sees something in him. Okay. Even though he, uh, he's... Uh, what do they say? Like, he's showing any sympathies and he's disobeying orders and the rest of it like she seems to take a big interest in him so she's like the surrogate mother i guess yeah maybe yeah. so anyway what happens next where are we in there so then uh then we get to part two oh my and God, it kind of starts only part up. one got a lot happening that yeah <laughs> <laughs> well part two part two is a little bit much of the same in terms of starting off they go to lunch and orinsky kind of gives them like hey you should give me your lunch or whatever <laughs> that was kind of weird but then it kind of escalates to where vickers like kind of bad mouths lasky and so lasky retaliates and they get into this like this brawl in the mess hall and then it gets it gets stopped by the leadership and we get to see our good our good man hamish beamish frank o'connor the janitor that's his little cameo then we get kind of some more like disciplinary kind of like dialogue and like oh lasky you know you're reckless you know take it up and all that and then uh, then we cut to an interesting kind of like a classroom sort of like scene where they learn about uh, this Roman battle against uh, the barbarians or something. I think I can't remember. It's not important. Yeah. So anyway, so they learn this kind of like tactical uh, maneuver where you kind of just flank the enemy and squish them from both sides just, and like pincers them together. And later, Lasky then utilizes that when they go on this other training op that they go on, and it's like one of their final exams that they go. 
And Lasky asks to get, he's like, I would like to have command of the, the forces and all that because, you know, I, I believe I can do it. And they're like, okay, Lasky, well, this is your last chance because, you know, you're on thin ice and all that stuff. And so they, they play catch the flag. It starts off where he's like, all right, we're just going to wait. And so they just like sit by the flag, like the whole squad of them, and they're just kind of hanging out. And then finally the enemy team starts like pushing towards them. And so they, they take off their helmets uh, that have the IFF trackers in them. They then go and do that flanking pincer maneuver because all of the, the enemy team is looking for the, the tags. And they're like, oh, they're just in one group. Let's just ambush them. And so once they realize that that, you know, wasn't, what was going on they get flanked and then lasky team lasky's squad takes everyone out and then he goes to get the get the flag but then right before he gets it he like passes out because of um he has this kind of like rare medical condition he has an allergy to the fluid in the cryo tubes i think it is yeah yeah for his lungs yeah and i wrote it it's like cryo pritholine pritholine it leaves him struggling to breathe every time he comes out of cryo which isn't super useful if you're a soldier yeah because going in a cryo <laughs> is pretty mandatory and i mean that's why they do it in the sh- uh, for the kids and the in the school where they basically sleep in cryo every week or something so they can get used to waking up and all that kind of stuff i think it was part of the exercise where you have to come out of cryo get your gear on run out and perform a mission it's all part of the kind They're of They're sort like, of running drills because like this is... Running drills. That's what I was looking for, yeah. This is back in the early days of Halo where like even in the books everyone went into cryo all the time because they couldn't have accurate slip space jumps and they didn't want the whole crew awake all the time. So this was all part of... Well, I think that's also... I think it's a general sci-fi thing that having like a large crew in cryo greatly reduces the amount of resources needed on a ship going through space. So you need less oxygen, less food, less kind of stuff. And you consume less. So it's more efficient to have like a crew of thousands and have like maybe a couple of thousand of them in cry out and have like whatever crew you needed to actually station the ship awake. I seem to get the impression now that maybe I'm wrong, but I get the impression the infinity seems to move a little bit faster than everything that came before. Like it never seems to take them very long to do anything or get anywhere. I know at the end of this you see Lasky going into cryo on the infinity, but they've kind of never mentioned it again. So I sort of got the feeling that it's uh, old school. Maybe I'm wrong though. I don't know. I just maybe they just don't need to emphasize that point anymore because it's boring. Do you know I mean, why bother talking about people being asleep all the time when you want to get to the action? Maybe there's just no need, no need to talk about it anymore. It's just a given that cryo happens. They don't have to specify unless it's a specific plot point. Let's say like Halsey's cryo thing being like stolen and stuff like that. Oh, sexy Halsey? Sexy Halsey, if you will. That's not kind of no, isn't it? <laughs> I love sexy Halsey. Uh, I don't know what's next. Where are we going? Yeah, that basically is, is episode two. It's it's mainly kind of the the cafeteria fight, and then kind of more character development, and then the capture the flag at the end. We also see more of Lasky's brother, just a little bit more, and then in the beginning of the third episode, Lasky wakes in the uh, med bay and talks, and that's where we learn about his kind of illness and all that, and uh, with all his blisters, and we also learn when he when he talks to Colonel Colonel McAfee that because of this this condition if he chooses he can kind of dis- medically discharge himself but it's you know up to him and so then he goes back to his room and kind of contemplates that watches more videos of his brother and then we kind of get an impression because silva comes in and she's like you know how are you feeling why are you watching all these videos why do you keep doing this yourself yeah and it kind of gives you the impression that he's like going down this like a similar path that like he's done before and it's Im- it's then implied, or then through a, a future video, we learn that his brother has actually been dead after a drop, an unsuccessful drop, and so he's just kind of replaying all these messages from his brother. And so that was very, it's a very you know somber moment, but but also to kind of get things exciting since he's still in his room. I think it's who is is it JJ? Is it that character? Or maybe it's Sullivan. I think it's Sullivan. Um, he comes in with uh, hacked, like, classified video video surveillance. This is where the whole show kind of kicks off. Yeah, this is where things start getting, like, okay, what's, you know, what's the story, like, really about? So important to know, this is pre-Covenant, or pre-First Contact. That we're, that this is kind of like, humanity doesn't know well, the this greater is, threat. This is pre-public knowledge. It's pretty public knowledge. That's kind of what I'm getting yeah, at, really. Yeah, because so. this this takes place in 2526 in, like, April. 
I mean, I guess it's hard to say when when it happens, but the the battle the battle at the academy takes place on April twenty sixth, according according to the internet. Okay, so like harvest has actually happened and stuff, but I don't think they're right. They're wider. No, they've right. still is been able right. to hide it up until now. There's this whole yeah. thing the whole way through it where you get lots of scenes of a uh, General Black staring at the sky, looking nervous. So obviously he has some clue that something. Oh, I never happening. noticed that. If you watch. You'll see scenes where he's sort of like sitting by the warthog with a cigar and he's looking sort of nervously at the sky and there's extra marines running about that seem to be doing more stuff and I think there's even a scene of like marines setting up a weapon emplacement somewhere so obviously he knows or he's been tipped off that the Covenant are en route. Or this could potentially could happen more so maybe not. Or I feel like maybe not en route but just like out there. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I feel like if they knew they were en route they would probably order some type of evacuation. additional forces or evacuation because i mean they're just kids i i know but there's something i don't know there's something about it makes me think that he knows more than he's letting on he seems awfully shifty i don't think the whole he time. knows it's just that he's probably just aware of the threat not if it was coming directly to him there's no reason not to evacuate he, he's probably in the inner circle of like hey there's a new enemy out there we have no idea what is what, what they are <laughs> like almost to i that suppose extent. then the other thing is i assume corbulo's planet is right out there on the edge of the system although it seems a bit weird that the planet where you'd go to send like the unsc's best and brightest military minds kids to train to be officers would be way out there well that just could, could just be the planet it could be a whole point maybe it's you know it's secret or i'd maybe, have assumed I no i don't know I'd, I'd have thought it would have been an inner planet you assume it'd be a more of an inner yeah. colony it didn't ha- it didn't have an inner colony vibe about it i got a very remote planet vibe about it i don't think because like the covenant attacks the academy not like a city which you think would be the obvious target so i i think it's more of a kind of training world for that purpose i don't know i assume there was something else there anyway because like i doubt they'd have a space lift otherwise it seems like i don't know there'd have to be more there to justify building a space elevator just for the school i don't know um the other thing if you maybe you picked up on it is i think it's when he's uh, when lasky's in bed in one of these scenes the camera pans up to a window and you see a ship enter orbit you see like a streak you see a streak in the sky that looks kind of like a shooting star but then it curls back in itself and stops also never noticed that i assume that's the like the first of the covenant scouts or something but there's little things like that when you watch back over it you start to notice them interesting so sullivan comes in and he's showing it looks like a kind of POV of a Spartan, but we don't really know that it's a Spartan yet. They're like starting to fight insurrectionists, but then it seems that they're now like trying to stop the fighting and like get them into grips and they're like fighting something else and they're like standing next to each other. And we get like a quick little flash where he pauses the video and we actually see, I think it's Fred because of the 104 on the side of his um, uh, shoulder. And so he pauses it and he's like, what is that? And then like, they call it like a robot because it just looks like this big machine. So yeah, so like the first time I watched this, I didn't know what we were looking at. I thought it was... I thought that, like, I didn't understand how they didn't know what a Spartan was. I was looking at the Fred's visor and looking at, are they looking at a reflection of a Covenant alien on it? That's what I thought they were looking at. I never copped it. It was just, oh, they just never knew, they just didn't know what a Spartan was. Yeah, they don't, yeah, they have no idea what the Spartans are. And I think, I think the, the elite reflection is just more of, like, a finer detail within the, the detail. He notices okay. that later because he comes back in later and blows it up. But at the time when they're first watching this, what they're talking about is you see Chief, there's a guy cowering behind a piece of concrete and Chief grabs him by the scruff of the neck nearly and lifts him up straight. That's right. And, uh, Sully's like, look, he's, look at this his guy's glove. eating. Yeah, he says like, look at his glove and look at his head. He's like, whatever this is, is about two foot taller than him. And then another guy runs up to him and Chief sort of looks down at him as well. And he screams that they're coming. And then that's when Chief orders like to fall back and him and the insurrectionists start to fight together because that's what has the squad confused is why are these unsc they still assume they're soldiers and why are these soldiers suddenly fighting with the with the insurrectionists and then the camera pans around and you get a glimpse of fred's helmet and that's when they all sort of like freak out being like what is this ah. giant metal thing and it, and it hit silva pretty impactfully because her, her parents died fighting the insurrectionists so she has a, a very strong viewpoint towards them and she could she can't like grasp the concept of like fighting with them and so I thought that was a good moment because it also reinforces like why she was saying in the beginning to Lasky like you can't we can't just 
you know, go around and flank them and try to talk to them. Like we're beyond that point. It's 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 it's, it's yeah, why it's called. They the are war. the enemy. Yeah, they are just simply the enemy, as like black and white as that is. And so she, like, it was a pretty big moment, like characterly as well. So that kind of gets us all on our edge of the seat. Like, okay, well, what's going to happen next? And then a freaking emergency alarm starts just blaring throughout the school. And uh, they're like, what's going on? It's like, you know, it's saying that this is not a drill. And they all kind of get into, I don't know where exactly, but they're in like, I guess, some hallway with a glass ceiling. And they're looking up and you can see the Covenant. I, I, is it, are they Corvettes? Or what type of ships are those? I think they're Corvettes. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I'd have to go back and look at it again, but... Yeah, they're small enough. I would have said they're Corvettes. In my mind, anyway. They're all queued up for the base of the space elevator. Oh, okay. Because up at the end are the set of, like, big doors with a compartment where... What do they call her? The, like, Eastern European sounding one, Dima? The blonde girl, she... Yeah, she, like, intimidates a soldier into letting her on because her... I think her mother her, is... Her mother's only... Yeah. No, her dad's only, her mother's basically the secretary of Fleetcom, which is oh, what, right, okay. and then her father's someone in Oni. Uh-huh, okay. So she, like, pulls rank with, do you know who my mother is, and gets on <laughs> on the space elevator. Although, to be honest, I would not, knowing what happens to her next, I would not have gone on the space elevator. Hindsight's... Well, well, with anyway. hindsight, I'd be much happier being on the ground than. But they're like looking up on it, and it's a really good shot. And I was like looking at it; cause it's it's very ominous and just like it's really dark, and all you see are the lights and kind of the outline of the Corvettes, and you see one come in, and then a second one comes in, and then a third one comes in, and it and it just kind of, I don't know, it just really illustrates like well all these different moments that we read about across the Halo kind of like planets of all these different characters first meeting the covenant on how just like the fleet is just overly massive and i think this was just a, another good way that they illustrated that i just want to shout out to two cool things in this scene just before the covenant appear one of them is when you watch the space lift you can see the whole lift rattling back and forth and like vibrating if you watch it you see that you know the shaft of the lift is like flexing up into the sky that gives you the impression like that something bad's happening up above the clouds and then just before it finishes and the Covenant appear, the ODSTs drop in. That's cool. Oh, yeah, that's right. The ODS- Yeah, and then they're like, why are ODSTs dropping in? Like, <laughs> Yeah, one, I, think, I can't remember which one it is. Turns around and says, it's never good when ODSTs are involved. And then, like, as soon as they land, so I get, like, the impression there's ships in orbit that have just, like, dumped their crews and dumped their ODSTs, and then the cruisers have come down into, into the atmosphere and shoot down the shoot down the space elevator, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, the, the Corvettes just, like, shoot it down and destroy it. And then that's basically where the episode ends with, like, okay, well, like, what's going on? So then, so then episode four picks up pretty much right where that light leaves off, and there's a cloaked elite that's, like, running around. I think, actually, the elite was introduced at the end of episode three, and so they're trying to, like, evade, you know, whatever this is, and they're like, oh, they know, they know it's cloaked, and so they're just trying to go around it's like the first half the episode is them just kind of maneuvering the hallways and trying to figure out what's going on and jj ends up getting sliced and or impaled by it and so they're 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 huckering and cowering we're not cowering but you know they're trying to get away in this in this corner and the elite comes around and starts bringing his energy shield towards lasky and starts spitting some sanghealy tongue at them and then all of a sudden just gets a knife in the back of the neck by uh mr master chief and he's like are y'all okay and, Come with uh, me if you want to live. <laughs> yeah, basically. But what was really good was like the kids are like, uh, "Oh, why'd you why'd you come back for us?" And he goes, you, "Because you guys are all that's left." And they're like, "On in the academy." And he's and then Chief goes, "On the planet." On the planet. <laughs> it's just like, oh, so good. The other cool thing there is when like Chief appears, they were trying to get the live ammo out of like a locked case on the wall, and they're hitting it with a fire extinguisher, and they can't open it, and they can't undo the lock. They don't know the security codes. And Chief just walks up and like tears the doors off the reinforced the reinforced cabinet yeah. and gets them the live ammo. It's just like yeah, it's such a cool intro. It's an awesome intro. It would be cooler if he didn't have one one seven stamped on his chest plate, though. Well, that's you know. Us. Oh, and shout out to I think it's in the trivia later. They call him. He tells them to call him Master Chief, although he's a. He's not actually a yeah. Master Chief at this section, so I think that's just done oh, really? for like. I think well, it's another. He's a Chief Petty Officer at this stage during the fall of Reach. He didn't get promoted oh, until later. I did not notice yeah, that. Yeah, I, th- I think that was another 
not necessarily goof, but an intentional. I think yeah, it's kind of done for the TV name, audience. Name association. It is what that is. But yeah, they they meet up, and so then he you know says along the lines of "Come with me if you want to live," and so they're going through kind of the area. Then they get you know pointed up, and Lasky ask Lasky, "Hey, can you drive the Warthog?" And Silva, you're going to be on point. Um, Orinsky, you're going to be on point as well. Then they get ambushed, and so there's a cool little firefight outside between different like building tops and stuff with jackals, which is cool. With, yeah, with jackal snipers, or I don't think they're snipers, but they're shooting like needlers and stuff. And there's so okay, a note about the slow motion. I think that they overuse the slow motion, but one of the better slow motion bits was when one of the jackals shoots a needler, and you see it just kind of come slowly towards. I think it was Lasky. And then all of a sudden, Chief just comes to the side of the screen, puts up his arm, and the needle like hits his like hits him and shatters. And then he like grabs Lasky and like throws him down under cover. So that was a pretty cool moment. But uh, then Las- Lasky gets to the Warthog. He hops in. He actually pulls General Black's body like out of it. Like General Black, I guess, tried to get away. And yeah, they they all got toasted because I think earlier in that scene you see Colonel Mahaffey. She gets exploded by a needler as well. Oh, the tray. Right. You don't see it happen, but you see the stream of needles, and then the camera pans away, and you see a puff of like wetness, and you're just oh. like, oh. Yeah, you get to see the needles are pretty brutal in this. Yeah, like she has no armor on or anything. She's just like in her uniform with a, I think like an assault rifle. Fat in at the the covenant and it's just like oh that's nasty yeah but yeah that was, that was a good moment when he kind of sees general black there and then pulls him out and then hops in and ha- has some trouble starting it but he eventually gets it started and chief's running on the rooftop shooting his pistol and then jumps down into the gunner did silva Sil- no, silva's not dead yet okay little well, spoilers but oh. so they hop in i forget i think it's sullivan him silva orinsky and then Chief, I Just think, is in the Warthog. Is yeah, currently alive. Yeah, they're in the Warthog, and so they drive off, and then that's like that's the end of episode four. So episode four is like the kind of like, oh shit, episode. It's like stuff's really happening, and then part five is like pretty much all action. It's hard to really. It's awesome, but I think um, it, when it comes to like part four, I don't think I wasn't expecting to see Chief. I got really fucking excited when Chief showed up, and he had an awesome intro. I wasn't expecting Spartans. I thought that was kind of it. I thought it was just going to be like the hint that we got before and that it was just like I couldn't see the relationship between like Lasky or like sorry between like well obviously Lasky and he's in Halo 4 but I did not think we were linking together Chief in this at all and um, so I thought that was that was a su- uh, pleasant surprise. Yeah I think I think I expected to see Chief I don't know if I heard about it through like promotional material or what I did I didn't know when so I mean I was still surprised when it happened but I just kind of knew it was happening sometime part five is great if you haven't seen the series and you're listening to this definitely watch it and uh because part five is pretty good choreographed between just the firefights and stuff but the gist of it is that they drive through a wart on the warthog they eventually have to hop out of it because i think they throw a sticky grenade and like not necessarily blows it up but like damages it and uh so then the grenades was it grunts or like I don't think there's any grunts in this, is there? I think it's a jackal. I is it not? In the... I think it was, was a it jackal because yeah, we okay. we saw some shields, some jackal shields. Okay. In the forest. Yeah, because I was just trying to think. It's just like that. It's just the kind of the one elite that we see, and then we get a couple of jackals. But I don't think there's grunts in this. Yeah, the the show. visual effects is actually used pretty well in, in yeah the given the of budget like, of this thing i think they did a really good job you know okay it's at night time and stuff but i think they did a great job well like like the the jackal shields like you pretty much only see the the shields you don't really see the actual like kgr and because of the motion blur and all that kind of stuff they're really to hide the kind of effects a lot and so i think that's kind of that's because they got that sick money that. shot coming up oh yeah <laughs> definitely the money shot um, but so they, they run through the jungle and they're, they're getting shot and all that kind of stuff. And then Silva, unfortunately gets hit and she, she dies. Sad moments. Belaski's girlfriend. Ooh. Yeah. Tear, tear. But, uh, Belaski got, took her dog tags, which come back. And then they get freaking ambushed by a hunter and chief like jumps off a cliff. First he likes gets smacked by it. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> but there's like, there's a cool moment before that where they like, they're in like the, the woods and he's like, they hear a roar and he's like, we're being hunted. And you're like, oh shit. What's oh yeah. Hunting them? There's like a, he, he knows what it is. So he's like, run. And then they just have to gun it in the in the hog. The other cool thing about that is whenever they're like hunkered down before Chief goes to fight the hunter, 
Chief, doesn't he stop Lasky and take the grenade off him because Lasky's going to like run distraction so they can escape? Something like that. And he's I like, so, no, yeah. no, you know, let the Spartan do this. And then he jumps on the hunter's back and then we got those epic statues. Yeah, <laughs> and he... He does. He does a cool little, cool little backflip, and that's, that's where the McFarland thing. Awesome thing ever that I ca- really wanted to be in a game someday. <laughs> Why I want to be able to mount a mount hunter and do this. Hunters and do an execution. Surely that should be a thing by now. If they had the one shot kill of a hunter in Halo One, they could at least have made it fucking cool by putting it in like this, where you mount a hunter, you shove a grenade into the worms, and leave leave it off and backflip off. I away. mean, it it would be it would be cool if you could get the hunter down to a certain like health to where it's quote unquote boardable and I maybe think we, you we shoot off the armor and this. like some of it's a I kind of imagine it would look like available. you know when you could board titans in the first titan fall and shoot into them I yeah. imagine something like that where you climb up on its back and you shoot down through its helmet you know in the back of its neck and you maybe kill it or you chip its life oh, down no, maybe you just you shoot off a piece of armor that can then allow you to throw a grenade in the same way like you board a, a, v, a tank and you punch the hatch open and then truck the grenade in. I would like something yeah. like that. While I think of it, well. don't hold me to this, but I'm pretty sure one of those like fan remakes, whether it's uh, what are the two like first person fan remakes? There's like there's the SV, like, SVP SVP three. Yeah, and the other one. And then like, I think there's installation installation zero four. zero four. I want to say that I thought in one of those trailers they had an animation to board hunters and kill them. No way. I, I, d- no d- I'm, I want to put it down <laughs> that on one of the trailers for one of those two mods. Aaron, don't lie to me. It's whichever <laughs> one. I, I'm wondering, is it whichever one introduced the uh, if, the hunter cannons can that you that. could pick up? That was SVP for Halo 1. Yeah, I think then yeah, it, it might be that one. But I want to say I've seen freaking awesome someone board a hunter and assassinate. Mm, interesting. I must investigate this. If someone knows of this video, please uh, let us know in the comments and all that. If I've just imagined this in a fever dream, please tell me. And then that way we can excommunicate Aaron for giving us false lies. Oh. For lying. Or I guess, well, there would be true lies. Please don't. I don't want to there... have to start a Gears of War podcast. <laughs> no, you start Start a, a, start a Wolfenstein zone. podcast. Kill zone. The Halo killer. The Halo killer. <laughs> so anyway, to so yeah, he does a cool backflip, shoves a grenade inside the worms, jumps back, and it just like just disintegrates everything just flies away and then chief like grabs like a fragment of the armor and then gives it to lasky once they get into a pelican and fly away and then you also get this this really really nice moment one of my one of my favorite moments personally in the whole show when kelly and fred take their helmets off and they're like the same age as uh yeah it's a great as the cadets and um, they're just like standing, like just sitting there. It's just total silence. And uh, Sullivan asks, "How old are you guys?" And Fred and Kelly kind of like look at each other. And Kelly then says, "That's classified." And I was like, "Oh man, it's such a it's such a good moment." That they yeah, these are just they're just kids. They're just teenagers. They're almost like no, they're not quite half our age, but we're getting there. So then, then Chief kind of tells Lasky, like, you know, you're a good leader and all this kind of stuff, and. Um, like good job today you'll go far kid <laughs> sort of a deal and gives them gives them the hunter fragment and then we kind of match cut that to back into the the present where lasky has um silva's dog tags and that same hunter fragment on his like keychain on like the same keychain and we hear someone the over the intercom is like do you want to listen to the message again referring to cortana's message and he's like no and then he's like but plot a new course and um, and so they then go investigate and hop in a slip space, and that's basically the setup right before Halo Four kicks off. It's funny though, but at this stage, wouldn't Del Rio be actually in charge of Infinity? That was that's what my question was going to be. So maybe Del Rio was of, in cryo, Del and maybe Rio? Well, Del Rio's shifts. in charge, but as the XO, Lasky could give the order to go. I assume he's the executive officer. Like he, I assume he could carry out. In the case of an emergency, he can like give the order to roll, even if Del Rio's in cryo or whatever. Yeah, it must have been something like that because I can't imagine that like, like obviously three four three and them or when they were like making the game, like Del Rio is like a thing because <laughs> like he he's a pretty important character on the Infinity. So I I just struck that as a little strange, but it it kind of makes sense in the context of the story because 
like of of Lasky remembering Chief and you know, being like making like it would just be weird if we get all of this and then he like reports to Del Rio and is like, hey, we need to go investigate something and Del Rio's like, huh, well, hmm, okay. I don't have much in the way of Navy knowledge here, but from my Star Trek knowledge, Riker usually gives orders and then tells Picard sometimes. So that's entirely what I'm basing this on. Well, I think that is adequate enough. So yeah, and that, that's that's it there. All the other things that I didn't mention um, at the beginning of each episode, Cortana has a little bit of like a monologue that kind of just talks about what she's been doing, and it uh, you know alludes to her rampancy and how she's been dealing with what's going on, and she kind of has the the dual sort of face and tone of of her and the rampant her, um, kind of almost talking to each other. Uh, like there's a good moment where she says something like, you know, I. I I don't know what's going on. I need to sit down and think. And then the rampant Cortana says, think you've been doing that. You've been too, doing too much of that already. Like that's what's, you know, causing some of this problem to begin with. She tries to kill Chief at one point. Like contemplates like turning everything off. She actually like seems to try. Her hologram goes like red and these tentacles lash out. These holographic tentacles lash out at the cryo tube. And then you hear like Cortana's other voice go, no, stop it. And the blue light sort of pulls the red back in again. But I assume the red was like one of the split personalities about to switch off Chief suit because she screams something like, if we're going to die in this boat, ma- the Master Chief's going to die with us. Oh, yes. So I assume this oh. is like the, the split personalities that we get and the like weird glitches in Halo 4. Yeah. But like it's it's all very well done and tied together. Like that whole intro no, scene. No, I, I really is... like it. And I... I personally actually prefer like this representation of rampant Cortana more so than the Halo, the Cortana that's actually in the game. Not to say that like the game Cortana rampancy is like bad, but just like the the performance out of Jen Taylor, I think, is just handled and like what she says, just like I think, really hits the tone of like what she's been going through in this four year isolation and how she's just thinking. <laughs> and overthinking you know even for an ai that thinks you know a gazillion times faster than humans so but uh that's basically it or not basically but that's 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 the show um again you can find this on halo waypoint there was some confusion or not halo waypoint on the (laughs) halo channel so yeah so there's confusion uh david and i were talking about it before the show he was looking on the halo channel for it because i'm pretty sure it, it like at least was on it in a searchable form I was able to watch it on the Halo channel, but I had to go to Halo Waypoint to add the episodes to my queue so then I could like search for or not even search for it, but just go to my queue and it would just be there ready for me to play. So you could watch it that way or you can you could buy a standard Blu-ray version of it. It's still available on Netflix in some regions. Um, It's not it's not available in the US. Aaron, you were able to watch it. It's still on Netflix here in the UK at the minute. So and you can buy it on YouTube. So it's there in you can also buy it on YouTube. YouTube movies. If you keep an eye on the events page, it's also coming out as part of like a collection, isn't it? Oh, that digital movie collection? There's the four digital movie or like the four film, the Halo 4 film movie collection, something along those lines. I I don't know if it's still available on iTunes. They made it seem like that was kind of a limited pre-release. Um, so you can check iTunes to see if um, it's still available there if you wanted to get that. Um, otherwise it will have a full physical release, um, for Halloween on the 31st. Um, and I think also that's included, you get Forward Unto Dawn, uh, you get Nightfall, Halo Reach, the animated series. And Legends. And then, uh, yeah, and then all the Halo Legend stories. Um, so it's a pretty, it's a pretty solid sizable, bundle. yeah, on so even, even for what Nightfall is, but, uh, and I guess follow reach for what that was it's a shame they didn't chip in the live action stuff i kind of you mean the adverts the halo 3 like the believe stuff you know like the fake documentary uh, there could be bonus stuff on there we just don't know about mm, that'd be a cool bonus thing to have mm, maybe but um but yeah so check it out if you haven't seen it um i mean it's not hollywood quality so just you know don't expect that but it it, it production quality though i think is pretty pretty good from like out of the gate in terms of 343 picking up uh, the Halo mantle. And like I said, like after watching it, and I think this is the like the only the second time I've seen it, like since it came out, what, five years ago. And uh, and it just makes me sad that Nightfall was such a disappointment after this, you know, really was 
I mean, I, I view it as a success. I'm not sure how 343 views it, but... But they released it digitally, so I don't know if, like, for free the first time around. So I don't know what the, the kind of viewing numbers that would have classified it as a success. But um, in terms of money-wise, I mean, I haven't bought it and you don't have to to view it if you have the Halo channel. I mean, they've made it awkward as fuck to find, but it's doable. Anything, any final closing remarks before we wrap up, guys? I love this. It was awesome. Yeah, I, I got to agree. It's exceptionally well done. Everything about it's great. Can't complain. Like the story. Yeah. Right on. I agree. It, it's, it was very enjoyable to watch, and I, and I do like, and I think what also, what I liked about watching it again is that I was able to watch it all back to back to back, whereas the first time was more episodic because I was watching it week to week. I have to say as well, it does, it's one of those yeah it's one of those things that it did a really great job of building the relationship the history between john and lasky and you can see why lasky cares so much about john and halo 4 it's because of the past history that is built up in this show and that's a really good way to do something um and not have to explain all that in or even just leave it unexplained in the games i think it was pretty cool just doing that yeah it's a good point so all right well everyone thanks for listening um again this was halo 4 forward onto dawn um, our halo book club And until next time, uh, Evolved. Evolved. Evolved.